Hi, and welcome back to our little farmstead in the hills of eastern Spain. What's this? These past few weeks it feels like we've been making some really good progress on some of the projects we've got going on around here. I've been working really hard on the transformation of a drafty corridor into a cosy office space for Mauro and I'm really excited to show you the end result when it's ready, which hopefully won't be too long. I've also been spreading manure around all of our fruit trees, which is a pretty big job. I have had about six tons of manure delivered and I've done about half of it so far. This is the first time I've manured our trees in two years, so I'm hoping it'll do them some good and we'll get some good harvest next year. As for the garden, I finally got most of the autumn winter stuff in the ground, although it's going to be more like winter spring stuff at this rate. I've got around to this a lot later than I would have liked, I guess because October and November were just so warm and I didn't really feel the pressure to get things in the ground or even seeded so early on. But anyway, everything's in now and I'm really looking forward to seeing everything grow over the next few months and hopefully giving us lots of stuff to eat in around springtime. Even though in some respects it feels like a bit of a failure this winter garden, I just have to keep remembering how much bigger and more established everything is this year compared to 12 months ago when I really only had one bed of kale and lettuce and we didn't even have any water in the garden at this point. So, as you can see, it is actually pretty much done. We had some guests this weekend and in basically one day we finished it between four of us. So we've put all the fencing up, that was probably the hardest job. Um, it took all four of us to manoeuvre this massive roll of fencing wire into place, it's super heavy. We were kind of shuffling it like metre by metre, dragging it around. There was one of us on each corner kind of feeding it around the corners. Um, it was pretty tricky but we did actually manage it and I'm really glad we had help for that because it would have really been a struggle for just me and Mauro. Once the fencing was in place it was super simple to just attach it with staples to the tensioning wires which we'd put on previously. I think we used about four or five hundred little staples in total but it was a super quick job just clipping the fence onto the wire and we also made this door. I wasn't really sure how this was going to go because it was the first time I'd really made a door apart from the door for the chicken coop which is not great. I was really keen to use some recycled materials for it because I wanted to keep it light so I wanted to use some really light wood um, and I also kind of wanted something that looked a little bit rustic but not too rustic. Anyway I think I kind of hit the mark on that. I'm pretty happy with how it looks and it was a lot easier to make than I thought. Amazingly it actually kind of hinges quite well. Um, it doesn't swing open, it doesn't swing close, it just stays where you put it which I think is the mark of a pretty good door. Coming in or out Una? Come on, out you can. Una hasn't quite got the hang of how the fence works yet. So it's just one more thing that I need to do on the door and that is actually make a way for it to close so I'm going to do that now. Oh 
Oh no. Okay, so that's the inside, which is just for when I come in here and I want to be able to close the door behind me, so it doesn't matter that it's... What are you doing? It doesn't matter that it's uh, got some slight give in it, because this is just for when I'm in here doing something with the goats and I don't want them to go straight out. <laughs> Una! She's trying to get out. <laughs> it's an enclosure, you can't get out. Okay, I'm still not 100% sure how to do the outer latch because, yeah, I'm just not sure. This is not that strong. You can see it's kind of pulling against the, the wood here. But we've got an animal coming in a few hours and this will do for now. Meanwhile, I'll keep having a think about how I can do a better kind of latch or something on the outside. Okay, so for demonstration purposes, here is a branch and this is how it's going to go. Looks just like a tree, doesn't it? So here she is. This is Daisy. You might already know Daisy. You might have met her before in a previous video. She's the donkey of a friend. I've looked after her before and this time my friend has gone away for a week and Daisy's staying with us. So she's testing out the new stable and enclosure. What do you think Daisy? Hmm? And I've just remembered something that I haven't done and that is sort out the water situation in here. Daisy's just walked over so she's probably thirsty. So I need to get her some water. Oh great, our first pile of fresh manure. Thank you Daisy. So we do have a water pipe coming down here. A little while ago I brought this down from a deposit which is just one terrace up. I don't know how long this piece is that I'm pulling. It's very heavy though. I've been trying to use this um, 40 millimeter polyethylene piping as much as I can everywhere because we've got like 300 meters of it and I'm trying to use it up in things so this is perfect to bring the water down from that deposit. The thing with this pipe is that it's very like stiff and kind of hard to handle so what I did was I <laughs> tried to put like a reducer on the end of this and reduce the size to a more like manageable size hose pipe with a tap on the end but it didn't really work because there wasn't enough pressure coming down here 
to actually get decent pressure out of the smaller tube. I think the thinner tube is just offering too much resistance. So what I'm going to do instead is just put a tap on the end of this one. I think the water comes out fine out of the end of this thicker tube. I was surprised that just reducing the size a little bit would actually have that effect on the water pressure. But I don't know, I'm learning about water all the time. So yeah, I've got this spare tap and uh, this is quite a fancy tap. Is it the right size? I'm not sure it's the right size actually. No, it must be. No, it's not. Okay, I don't know why. <laughs> why have I got this? Okay, so amongst my various irrigation supplies, the best thing I could find was this bit of pipe with a 40 millimeter tap attached to it. I don't know why I've got this or where it's from, but I think this is the best I can do for now. I just have to attach that to this. Okay, I've just got to go and turn the water on at the bottom of the deposit up there. This is my least favourite weed or wild plant that grows around here. It has these pretty little yellow flowers, but when they create their seeds, the seeds are these little explosive little balls of very sticky, spiky seeds which get stuck to you. It's especially annoying when you've got anything fluffy like these socks. Okay, here we go. So this is the old tap which was always cemented into the bottom of this deposit. It's always been here, seems to be working fine. So here we go. Let's open this. So my plan now, as long as I don't have any leaks down at the bottom, is just to leave this tap open and not have to come back and fiddle with it. And then this pipe, which goes over the side of the terrace there, over the side of the terrace and down along there to the goat shelter. And then this is the tap that I will use whenever I need to fill up the water. So that just makes my life a lot easier than having to open and close the tap at the bottom of the deposit. This is obviously a much better idea. Thank you. Um. So today's a very exciting day. There's Mauru. He is currently dismantling our old electric enclosure where the goats previously were because they're not going to be living here anymore. And as you can see, they're not here at the moment. They're actually out with the shepherd who lives up there. There's his, I don't know if you can see it, but on the top of the hill is a long flat building where the goats live. That's where the goats are right now, hopefully getting impregnated.
that's it. The goat enclosure is gone. I can't believe we've got this field back. Just got to dismantle the previous shelter. That should be good because we'll get three more pallets back. So this is our stick pile now with Malro for size comparison. And this is the remains of basically what our two goats have eaten through the last six months. So just to give you an idea. Quite a lot. When you it looks like a lot when you pile it up. It didn't feel like a lot every day when we were <laughs> chucking a couple of branches in, but... But this doubles as pruning too. Yeah, all of this came from our land, from our trees, and was not the result of a big prune. It was just bits that I chopped off here and there to meet the need, so... I don't think it's as much as it looks. out. We're going to try and escape the rain, or rather escape the house where we've been confined due to the rain. It's been raining for a few days and the weather forecast looks like it's not going to change much in the next week. So yeah, projects have come to a standstill and we're just going to see if we can find a little market in a nearby town, something to do, maybe a nice hot drink, feeling like some hot chocolate. what you need. They're you not, need these. No, they're not. They're not it's not what you want? Enough. No. What about these? No, we need woolly ones. These are woolly. So these are the olives that I salted a little while back and to be honest I think I've left them for a bit too long but I'm going to wash the salt off them and see whether they're edible at all. Oh this they're so shriveled. They don't look very appetising to be honest. Yeah, it's not great. I mean, it tastes all right, I guess, but it's very dry and leathery. I think they just had too long in the salt. It's like, I wouldn't enjoy eating this. <laughs> all right, all right. we've got the corker, we've got the bottles. 
coming out? Barely. Oh. Well, there's going to be a vacuum, so we should undo the vacuum. So although the salted olives were 100% a failure, we've actually had some success with the wine that we've been fermenting. The other day, after being in an airtight vessel for two months, it was finally time for the bottling process. Okay. This took us a long time because the wine came out in a really slow dribble and we couldn't find a way to make it come out any faster, but eventually we were done and we got 24 oh, bottles in total. Next bottle! A few days later, we took a few bottles around to our friend Miguel's finca, which is where we actually harvested the grapes in the first place back in September, and with friends we sampled what we'd produced. I guess it's fair to say that the results were slightly hit and miss. Um, two of the bottles we opened were really nice and we really enjoyed them, but two of them were also kind of fizzy. <laughs> we think the issue we had is that these bottles, um, the last two, were the ones that we filled from nearer the bottom of the vat where there was a lot of sediment which had sunk to the bottom. Since we had such a small quantity of wine to begin with, we were trying to waste as little as possible, so we just bottled as much as we could, but we reckon we probably shouldn't have used the stuff right at the bottom. The wine with lots of sediment seems to be continuing to ferment in the bottles and kind of ruining the wine and giving it a weird flavour. Anyway, we definitely got some good bottles and a lot of learning out of the experience, and we can't wait to try again next year.